one, two, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Amen. God bless you all. Welcome tonight. Amen. We're going to worship God. Amen. Those that are joining on the live stream, we welcome you as well. Amen. We're going to sing that song, Hosanna, Hosanna, praise is rising. We haven't done this one in a while. Let's sing it with all our hearts. Lift your voice. Give praise to God. Amen. As we lay a foundation for his spirit to fall upon the service. Amen. So let's sing it. Praise is rising. Give it all for Jesus. Here we go. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. And hope is stirring. Hope is stirring. Hearts are. Cause when we see you, cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us worthy of all of our praise hosanna 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 come have your way among us we welcome you here lord jesus second verse Turn to you, man, in your kingdom. In your kingdom, broken lives are made new. You make us new, man, because when we see you, because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all of our praise. Hosanna, Hosanna. have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's give him praise. God, we thank you. We praise you, God of heaven, of glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to go to the next song. Help me out again. I love to be in your presence and sing it with all our hearts. Here we go. I love to be in your presence with your people singing praises. I love to stand and rejoice, lift my hands and raise my voice. Love to be. I love to be in your presence with your people singing praises. I love to stand and rejoice, lift my hands and raise my voice. You set my feet. You set my feet for dancing. You fill my heart with joy. You've given me a reason to rejoice, to rejoice. I love to be in your presence with your people singing praises. I love to stand and rejoice, lift my hands and raise my Sing it again. I love to be in your presence with your people singing praises. I love to stand and rejoice, lift my hands and raise my voice. Accept my feet. You set my feet for dancing. You fill my heart with joy. You've given me a reason to rejoice, to rejoice. I love to be in your presence with your people singing praises. I love to stand and rejoice. 
Lift my hands and raise my voice. Lift my hands, lift my hands, lift my hands and raise my voice. Lift my hands, lift my hands, lift my hands and raise my voice. Yes, amen. Let's thank him again, Lord Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, for the church, the assembling of God's people. We're here today to give you the glory and praise in Jesus' name. We said together, amen. God bless you. We're going to sing the slow song, Refiner's Fire. Why don't we lift our hands, amen. We're going to bow our heads before Jesus. If you're at home, amen, lift your hands wherever you're at. We're going to thank God. Let's ask him to purify our hearts before we hear the message. Here we go. And purify my heart and let me be as gold and precious silver purify my heart and let me be as gold and pure refiner's fire one desire is to be holy set apart for you Lord I choose to be holy set apart for you my master to do your will. Man, second part, purify. <laughs> purify my heart. Cleanse me from my sin. Refiner's fire. Refiner's fire. And my heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be. Let's praise God right there. We thank you, Lord, tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we exalt the name of Christ, giving you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. We all said amen. God bless you. Let's bow our heads together tonight. Amen. I can already feel the presence of God. Amen. That song always gets to me, so I choke up a little bit. Amen. But there's nothing greater, amen, to be than in the presence of God with his people and completing the will of God, amen. To where the Bible says in Revelation, it says, well done, good and faithful servant, for you have been faithful with, and trusted with many riches. Welcome into paradise, everlasting glory of Jesus Christ, amen. So we're going before the throne. Let's thank Jesus today, amen. Always for the blood of the lamb, amen. And I just had a revelation and an epiphany in a situation I had at home, but I'm gonna say it what God is telling me right now. Beloved, let me just tell you right now in Jesus' name. A lot of people complain that life isn't fair, and I get it. Life is difficult. There's uh, ups and downs. There's turn of events. Amen. In a matter of seconds, your life can change. You could be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life, beloved. Life takes a turn. But here's what I have to say, beloved. When people are complaining that life is fair, that's not what you want, amen, because if life was fair... God would have judged us the moment that we sinned, amen. But we thank him tonight for the mercy that he has bestowed upon his people, amen. That's why I said, God, I don't want fair. I want your mercy. I've taught my kids that the other day. I want mercy, God, amen, because we are frail, we're weak, we're capable of making blunders and mistakes, and yet God's mercy remains over our lives. And all he asks, beloved, amen, tonight 
is that you repent and believe in him. And this is why his promises are so rich. He says, though you are as red as scarlet, as crimson, he says, I will make you as white as snow. That is a promise from God for all those that believe. Amen. God is a merciful God and will forgive his children. And that's what grace is for. But let me say one more thing. Never abuse the grace of God. Grace is intended for us to draw closer unto him. And it is the mercy of him that allows us to slip and fall and make mistakes, but we are to learn from it. And that's why we love the God that we serve. Amen. He's a merciful God. Can you say amen with me? Amen. amen. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Why don't we continue to pray uh, for those that we love? Amen. Pray for your family members, people that are extended to your family. Uh, Brother Landon, we lift you up every service. Amen. Wonderful to have you uh, also tonight. I don't want to make you the highlight of the service. Amen. But we just thank God for you, brother. And we just pray that God would miraculously heal you and that you call upon his name. Don't give up. Jesus is Lord. He's sitting on the throne at the right hand of the Father, and everything's going to be okay as we trust in Him. Amen. We're going to lift up all those that we love, Danny Lauder, Jim Lauder as well. We're going to pray for Frank and Cherie out in Missouri. Amen. For, for his recovery of his knee replacement. Continue to pray for uh, Paige Walensa. We're lifting up her in Jesus' name that God would cover and protect her. Uh, Jerry Howes as well. We're going to pray for a broken Aaron, uh, Aaron as well. Howes. Lift up all those that aren't here tonight, the Ayala family. We're also praying for um, uh, Donio Ayala, Manny's son, for salvation. I also want to pray for uh, Daniel, okay? I don't think he's on the live stream, amen, but we want to pray for Daniel. I know he sits in the back. Don't mean to put him on the spot as well, but I think God is going to touch his life, amen? Let's believe God for that. We're praying for the young kids as well. All the teen and the youth that are here, you got to know, amen, get your hearts right with Jesus, amen. Be prepared. We're at that age where we will stand before God, amen. Don't wait till it's too late. The coming of the Son of Man is at hand, and you are commanded to be prepared, amen. With all love and grace, amen, call on Jesus. You have a wonderful opportunity, even in a place like this, to find Jesus Christ. I wish I had it when I was, as when I could first remember, but I thank God that he saved me as a young 21, 22-year-old, and I'm here today, amen. So let's pray for all those that we love. Uh, we're going to lift up Ella as well. We're praying for uh, Mario Ayala as well, for his sciatic nerves, Brother Benny, sciatic nerves, any infirmities, we lift them up. If I didn't mention you, don't get offended. Amen. God knows who you are. That's why we're going to lift you up in spirit. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you tonight. Amen. By the grace of Jesus. Amen. You are a wonderful God. We thank you, Lord. Amen. That we have such a king of righteousness who is uh, well-balanced. Amen. Perfect in all his ways. Sovereign king. King of kings and Lord of lords, we bow before your throne and we thank you here today. We lift up all those, Father, in our prayer request and those that we didn't mention, God. We're here today to honor, to revere you as Lord. Let the power of the Holy Spirit fill believers. And Father God, that we would be prepared for the coming of the Son of Man. We thank you for our leadership. I thank you for Pastor Paul Stevens, God, for Ernie Lopez, Pastor Puglisi, Richard Contreras, God, men that discipled me, that helped me to be who I am today. But most of all, your spirit that worked through these men. And God, we're here today to make a copy, a similitude, Father, of your grace in this place, Father, that you would raise up men and women, old and young, Father God, to do your will in this place. We're asking for every flyer that was passed passed out for our special anointing, God, that you would honor our efforts, and Father, that you would use us as a mouthpiece of righteousness, Father, that we would stand in the gap, that people would see that Jesus is alive, and that he is forevermore. We thank you so much. We love you tonight, giving you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name, we said. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's take time to bless one another. We'll start shortly. Amen.
Amen. Test one, two. All right. Amen. God bless everybody. Amen. Good to be here Wednesday night. Amen. Jesus on the throne. I got some special uh, announcements that I'll announce in just a moment. Amen. Don't forget, uh, Saturday, praying all goes accordingly. We'll meet up again, 11 a.m., 15 minutes of prayer, five-minute travel to the corner of Morgan and 27th Street, and then we go crazy for Jesus. Amen. For about 35 minutes, God will help us with that. Uh, also, there is going to be a revival if you can make it. It's not an obligation. I know the travel. I know driving through Cicero is not my favorite. Amen. Uh, but, yeah, it'll be revival over there uh, starting at 7 p.m. Pastor Gigi Hernandez, if you need information, let me know. We're possibly going to go tomorrow if all goes good. And then I believe Tony, Pastor Tony Rascon from uh, New Berlin will be there Friday night. And it would be a blessing if we could support that. And if you can't, just pray for the services uh, that all goes well in Jesus' name. Amen. So those on the live stream, we welcome you. I do want to share a report. Amen. We got a report in Jesus' name. Uh, so if, if you remember the testimony of Melissa and Gabriel Reese, uh, Landon, you probably weren't here for this, so they were not able to get pregnant. I give all the praise and the glory to God. This is not me being big-headed, amen, but God uh, moved powerfully. Uh, when I went to preach for his church, I gave him a, a word, and sometimes words flow that they just flow, and I want to trust God in that. And as I was proph prophesying that over their life, they had been prayed by the big dogs, not me. Amen. The Greg Mitchells, the Pastor Stevens, the Moses Aguilars, they had numerous pastors that have, they got a lot of buckles on their belts that represent that they've done great things for the Lord. But lo and behold, amen, a small preacher came up filled with the Holy Spirit, amen, and God bless uh, this family. I was able to give them a word. They got pregnant. She found out in the prophecy that I gave, even Nicole spotted it, I said, it's gonna ha you're going to find out on a special day. They found out they were pregnant on December 25th. In Jesus' name, they were pregnant. And when you heard about that, we heard of complications. So they were already telling her that the baby had possibility of Down syndrome, that they found some things. I don't know how they do it with the blood, and they test certain things. And so they were not discouraged, but because of Gabriel, I'm telling you, that man has faith. They said, we fell in love with the baby the first day that we found out we were pregnant, and we're going through with it. Many people, during discouragement, will pull the plug on a miracle that is in the womb. Amen. The womb was supposed to be the safest place for a baby to be. To be. Amen. Now it's become a murder chamber, and people are discarding them like they're nothing. Well, they had faith. They're believing God. Long story short, amen, this uh, sonogram was taken May 15th, 16th. Okay? I'm not making this up. They said they looked through the scan. They cannot find anything that resembles Down syndrome on that baby. Amen? So we thank God for that. I just want to bow our heads very quickly. We want to thank God for that. Beloved, hold strong in whatever you're going through. And this is a miracle because they, they have all the technology. They said we don't see anything, any sign of Down syndrome. And they're taking tests right now. Let's just pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God, it is your hand. You are sovereign and you are king. I thank you for this beautiful couple, God, Gabriel and Melissa Reese, for the faith that they have shown, God, four years of marriage and they, they have not been able to have babies, God, but by your mercy you have spoken and by your grace, God, you have revealed a miracle, God, and we thank you. I pray that you would preserve this little one, God, that is in the womb right now of a beautiful family. And God, though people discard your creation, we're here to thank you, God, amen. You are a faithful God. And you are the giver of life and the taker of life. And no man can have part of that. And we thank you here today, Father. Endure. Help them to endure, God. Increase their ministry. Bless them financially, God. Prepare the way for them, Father. Let this story be shared throughout the world that Jesus is alive and you are still doing miracles to this very day. We give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name, we said. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. So a powerful testimony with that. Just keep praying for them. We'll give you more updates. I don't know the timing. When is the baby? <laughs> probably September, right? If they found out December, probably around September, maybe late October as well. And we'll fill you in with updates. Can't wait to see the little creature in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, in light of that saying, beloved, let's just prepare to give today. And I wanted to read Matthew 10, verse 8, that we know freely you have received 
and freely give. And it always reminds me of back in the world, amen, when, when, in the days in which we always we social, socially gathered with those that were part of the world. How many remember those days? And every time we gathered, beloved, we had no problem, amen, taking a collection when it came to the party. It was drinking, drowned to the very end. I remember being in households as a kid. If the beers ran out, they'd put a potluck and the person would be out the door and immediately to the gas station to get more to keep it going. For the kingdom of God, beloved, we give freely because we have freely received. And therefore, with that, I want us all to bow our heads, beloved. The contributions go even now as we're saving. We have 7,000 still in the bank, and I thank God for that. And we are uh, preparing for revival as well. And I just want to thank God, amen, for your contributions as we continue to save. And also that, uh, pray that God would help me as well to be a good steward and to make sure that we use the finances where they need to go, amen. So, God, we thank you here tonight. We praise you here today, Father God. And in this place, we ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, God, over every decision that is made. And, Father, even check my spirit as well, Father. Let this never be to force your people, God. Rather, let it be by faith that we give to release into the kingdom of God finances, to be good stewards of that which is not ours. Help us here today to bless your ministry, Father God. Let, never let it be a burden to give, God. Let us give joyfully to your kingdom. We give you all the praise over the tithes, offerings. In Jesus' name we said. Amen. Amen. God bless you. The offering basket will go around. Don't forget, you can give in, on Cash App. I think we only have one that gives there, but it works. So it has the number symbol, Potter's House, MKE. You could take a screenshot or a picture of that in Jesus' name. Amen. Always awkward for that part. I don't like the. Anyway, let's turn to Galatians chapter 1 in the Word of God. And I've, Galatians 1, verse 10. Only one scripture today. Praise. I mean, one verse. Calm down. <laughs> Amen. So God help me with this today. And I'm hoping that. Uh, you know, God will help me with this. I'm, I want to minister on confrontation. Amen. How many like confrontation? Okay. Oh, I, I know you do. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm talking about when you, when you got to get down to business and someone needs to hear what they need to hear. Amen. And if you're anything like me, I struggled with confrontation. It was one of the things that was like avoid it at all costs, stay away from it, don't deal with it, peace at every place. Beloved, for the kingdom of God, there comes a time where we're going to have to con confront people. Now, let me say something very quick, not for the purpose of being combative, not for the purpose of, you know, flexing your ego or pride towards people, but there's going to come a time when we need to confront things, even ourselves, with issues that we are struggling with. It was... Uh, uh, Cheryl Richardson that said, if you avoid conflict to keep the peace, you start a war inside yourself. Can you say amen? amen? Cheryl Robertson, she's not even a Christian. She is a positive speaker, influencer. Uh, she likes to inspire people. But let me read it one more time. She says, if you avoid conflict to keep the peace, because we all want to be, keep the peace, you start a war within yourselves. How many know that that's true? When we don't confront certain issues and we smile about it when internally we're not okay with the conflict or the issue, what ends up happening is that we begin to deteriorate in the inside while the other person who may, you may have conflict with continues in life while you're the one struggling. And I say it again, if you're anything like me, raise your hand tonight if you struggle with conflict. Nobody. Okay, praise God, amen. I was hoping I was the only one. And again, if you're anything like me, confrontation, I mean, literally, I got the picture here, it gives me the McGurgles, amen, that's what I call it. I mean, it really turns the stomach uh, when you think about confrontation. And this is something that I struggled with from the very beginning that I could think of. Let me tell you about an experience that really triggered it and it was imprinted in my mind that carried me forward of how I would deal with conflict. When I started skateboarding, amen, I picked up a skateboard. I wanted to become a pro. These are some of the ramps that I had back at home. I just got a picture. That's not El Paso grass, by the way. Amen. It wouldn't survive out there. And so I started skateboarding, and I picked it up very quick. I was excited about it. There was a guy four houses down that donated me a ramp and this box that I would slide on. And I started to get confident with it. I was a little scared of how I would manage it. 
And I still remember as a kid, I was probably 10 or 11 years old. I go up to the ramp and I got timid and scared. I was going to pretend like I was going to do a flip. And then the neighbor from the other side of the house, who was the only child up to no good, he shouts in a screen. You can't even see him. He says, you suck. And I stop. I immediately became discouraged. I grabbed the ramp. I pulled the box into the driveway. I never skated in the front of the yard again. I was intimidated. I felt like a nobody. And just with those simple words, beloved, again, was able to imprint my heart that would send me on a trajectory that I would struggle of how people perceived me, how people I wanted. I wanted to look good for everybody. I didn't want to fail. So therefore, to avoid those things, I took a step back and never dealt with internal issues, even confronting the own struggles in my heart. How many know that you can have conflict within yourself that you need to address, but you know you don't want to? Who am I speaking to tonight? Amen. You have an internal conflict that you need to confront, but because you refuse to address yourself and deal with the issue, you're going to have a very long road understanding the big things that come up ahead. You see, there's a root and an origin to every matter and what was revealed to me by God in heaven is this. And this is what I felt God in these words. He's saying, why do you care of how others view you when you should be caring more about how I view you? Can you say amen? amen. God is telling us today, he says, why are you so uh, disrupted of how people, what, what people think of you when it comes to confrontation? Because that's one of the issues. We're scared of how someone's going to respond to when on our confrontation when we address certain things so to be nice we stand back but what ends up happening is that we want to appear good to a person when God is saying I want you to appear good with me can you say amen I know I'm talking to some people even tonight but see you confrontation is essential for the kingdom of God beloved it is part of the kingdom being a Christian itself comes with the badge that you're going to have some confrontations that you're either going to abandon or let them control your life. Amen. Let's read our text before we go any further in Galatians 1 in verse 10. And it says very simply, it says, For am I now seeking the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If, if I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. Amen. Let's bow our heads together. Father, we give you the glory and the praise. Amen. And we're here today, God, to get down to business. Amen. The confrontation in any aspect, in every scenario. Each of us struggles with confrontation. And a lot of the time, some of the root issues and the origins of it is the fact that we care more about what others think of us than what you think about us. We feel that we're going to be rejected, but we've been accepted by the God of glory. We get timid and scared and fearful. And even in our own personal lives, within our own minds, God, there are issues that we need to confront. But we become timid and scared. I pray that right now through the Holy Spirit, you would enable every person to receive this message. To take an internal analysis of their heart and their mind and their spirit. To test themselves as well. To check every crevice every crack of their life to make sure that we are living according to the kingdom of God, but most importantly, not caring about what the world thinks about, not that we're going to be rebels, not that we're going to turn into some lunatic, but rather, God, that we would serve you according to your ways. Help us here tonight, God. Speak to hearts. Even now, God, begin the transformation in a person's heart that can have impact from now into eternity. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name. And we all said, amen. amen. I'm going to put a scary picture up here of some nuclear warheads. Now, as we think of these, we think of the war of Russia or any previous war, we think of a conflict. And most of the times, even the leaders of the world know that they have to be strategic on how they handle these. Amen. At a push of a button, beloved, we could be in a nuclear war of no time. But what it takes is a mind who is able to confront people to be stern with people. How many know what I'm talking about? But also have wisdom to express to find a common ground. We don't want war. But see, the world would be a different place if we just learned how to confront. Can you say amen?
See, the world problems exist today because of the inability to confront and resolve issues such as wars. Uh, you know, and the world is broken not because there's a conflict. Think about this. The world is broken not because of a conflict, but because no one knows how to confront anymore. There's no more confrontations or even having a dialogue to understand each other's differences. But when we look at even nuclear warheads, one more time, think of the legions of armies that are throughout the entire world militarily. And not because we don't have the solutions to the problems, but rather because we don't have the wisdom on how to confront. Amen? There's people that have gotten in divorce, not because they didn't love each other. But they didn't know how to have confrontation, how to learn to resolve issues. I'm sure that the foundation of it was love because certain things have passed by. How many know when we don't address certain things and we let them pass by, beloved, within ourselves, we well up like a pressure cooker, amen, and we wait till the last minute. And, and what we need to know, beloved, is that when there's confrontation, when we can speak and say, look, uh, I need to address an issue, amen. We need to talk about something because this cannot continue. I love you, but we have to find common ground. And see, this is happening throughout the world because of lack of confrontation. Think of Proverbs 15 and verse 1. It says, a soft answer turns away wrath. But a harsh word stirs up anger. When struggling with confrontation, we need to ask ourselves, whose approval are we actually wanting? Amen. When it comes to certain things of how we see people view each other, think of what it says again in Galatians. It says, for am I seeking the approval of man or of who? Of God. And what I've learned since walking with Jesus Christ, amen, since he's touched my heart and changed my life. Here, I'm going to give you a little secret in today, beloved, amen, and maybe this will bless you. The day that you stop caring about what people think about you is the day that you'll be set free. Can you say amen? The day that you actually express, and this is the, the thing with confrontation, don't take it today that I'm telling you, you need to go confront everybody. You need to yell at it. That's not what I'm saying here today, is that when we have confrontation, we are able to express what's in our heart in a godly perspective. Can you say amen? How many times have we been in a situation where someone has pressured us into doing something we knew that we didn't agree with? Amen. I could name countless things because of pressure. My wife knows when I first got married, I was a yes man. Oh, yeah. I thought that was a good thing. No, these are works for Jesus. I'm doing this because the Lord is in me. The Holy Ghost is in my life, and I can go far to any region to say yes to everybody. Beloved, I'll end up a steak on a table because I've been burnt out of all the yeses that I've said. There comes a time, beloved, where we, we put our, dig our heels in and say, you know what? We need to talk about something. I don't agree with what you're saying. Can you say Amen. And God begins to help us with this. And when we're struggling with confrontation, we need to know, beloved, the day that you stop caring about how people think about you is truly the day that you were set free. All my life, beloved, I'm telling, I'm from my, when I can first remember, head down, no confidence, had no skills, beloved. Anything I tried to do, I did it timidly. I thank God my mom tried to put me in T-ball. Amen. At least I was able to hit the ball off the tee, but she was trying to develop my social skills and get me out there. But at the end of the day, beloved, my head would just come right back down. Every time before school, backpack on. And as Vince, always keep your head up. You know, just walk. People would talk to me. I'd give them huh, a grunt. I remember uh, there was a guy, his name was Danny. I had gone to a new school. All I did was smile. That's all I knew how to do. And he comes up to me. He goes, hey. It was in fifth grade. New student at the school. Hadn't talked to anyone in about a month. He goes, do you talk? <laughs> <laughs> and in my heart, I knew this as, as a conflict inside of me that I need to confront. There's something inside me that's not right that people are noticing. I, I had people tell me, you think you're too good for us, don't you? I'm like, no, I don't even talk. He says, you don't talk because you think you're better than all of us. I've had people think that because of internal issues that I had. But the first thing that we need to know, amen, for all of us tonight is, men, you don't need the approval of people. Amen. What you need is the approval of God. 
That's all that matters in this world, beloved. Everyone can reject you. Jesus was rejected to the farthest degree, amen. But if you're not accepted by the world, beloved, all the only one you need to be accepted by is Jesus Christ. You need to care about what God thinks about you and not your neighbor, not that person that you're trying to impress. Uh, and when people say they don't like you, beloved, we got all the love we need from Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? When they don't approve of you of something, well, we have all the approval because we have been accepted into the kingdom of God and his righteousness through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we all said again, amen. The question is, whose approval are you living for? Who cares what they think is what we need to have. Now, again, I'm not saying in a proud way. I'm not saying go bleach your hair and buzz off your eyebrows and say, they got to accept me for that's not what I'm talking about. People will stare at you. <laughs> Amen. But what I'm talking about is being to vocalize what you believe in, even in the gospel. One of the most difficult things about passing flyers is telling someone, you know, that they don't believe anything in Jesus Christ. I told you about a door that I walked in over here in West Dallas. He came out looking like Satan. Confrontation. And he comes out showing me his tattoos of the Baphomet. He says, I'm a Satanist. And I said, I'm a Christian. He says, I've tried that Jesus stuff. It didn't work. And I said, you know what? I've been where you are. I understand what you're going through. But Jesus changed my life, sir. I was blind, but now I see. Beloved, had it not been for the spirit of confrontation, I would have folded like a chair quickly and broke out in a hive and run out of that place very quick. But God enabled through the spirit of God, amen, to be able to express what we believe inside without caring how people will judge us. Rewind 15 years ago, that would have never happened. I would have found a way out and said, no, not at all. I'm not going to be a part of this. But we need to ask one more time, again, whose approval are you living up? There are people that will end up going to the wrong church because of the opinion of another person trying to convince them to leave the place that they love. Can you say amen? People become atheists because of the person that has convinced them to tell them that there is no God. And because of the opinion of that person, and the inability to express what they truly believe, a person will become atheist. Do you understand that tonight? There are people that end up in wrong relationships. Why? Because of someone's opinion. What would it be without the influence of another person's thoughts? Who would you be, rather, without the opinion of another person's thoughts? I remember when uh, we were dating before we got married. I'm not going to name who, but there were some people that didn't like me. Amen. Now I'm God's gift to, <laughs> to my wife. Okay, all right. Okay, but think about it very quick. Had she listened to the opinions of other people, I don't know where I'd be today. I believe that she, she was the lifeline, not that she's God, but a tool that God used to get me into the church doors to say yes to God. Can you say amen? And beloved, because if we become pressured by the opinions of other people, we're going to end up living our lives according to what they think rather than what God has placed within our heart and within our lives. Let me say again, who would you be without the influence of other people's thoughts? Some would never know how to become drunkards unless they what? Hung out with a drunkard. I would have never become a drunkard had I not run into my friend. I knew it was wrong. I testified about it Sunday night. I knew I didn't want to become a drunk. I didn't want to become a drug addict. But because of the influence and my inability to confront the leader of the band, guess what? I caved into the pressure. I believe there's a lot of people that are missing out on the call of God because their inability to confront. They become timid under the peer pressure and the weight of other influencers that are around them and end up falling into a dead end. You know, even the greatest struggle with confrontation, okay? A lot of big names that, that we could think about that struggle with confrontation, but as a Christian, it's unavoidable. I want to tell you about three of the greatest ones. Can I do that today? Three of the greatest confrontations of my life, all of them having different outcomes. You ready for this? <laughs> the day I gave my life to Jesus. Internal conflict. 
things that were in my life, again, welling up, wanting to stay within the world, battling with things that were in my mind, again, forcing me to want to go back into the world. When I gave my life to Jesus, I was forced by the Holy Spirit to, to confront the issues of my life. How many remember that day? Right before the altar, you may have been just at home when you made a decision for Jesus, but there came that time of confrontation like an altar call where you're battling within your mind, should I or should I not? This is an internal conflict, amen? And it's a time and an opportunity where God is testing the heart. Will they confront their sin? Will they address the issues of their life, their addictions, their brokenness, their pride? Will they come to the altar to be exposed? And the Lord through His Spirit caused a break like a dam, beloved, in my heart and in my mind to see the sin for what it was. Can you say amen? John 3.19 says, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world. But people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. See, that's a conflict, an issue with the heart saying, I love the darkness in my heart. I love sin. And verse 20 says, everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Beloved, I can't express any further of the day when I got saved. Honestly, it's like I saw my life flashing before me and all my sins were laid bare before the God who saw everything. It was in that state of brokenness where I'm looking at my wife and thinking about the child in her belly and God says, I've got you. I have a lifeline here today. Take it, but you need to confront your sin. And for the first time in my life, I was able to admit I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I'm broken. I have nothing. God, you've cornered me. I lost everything. I didn't have a job. I had, I mean, I literally lost my job on Easter Sunday. I can still remember that. I didn't show up to work. Amen. I got drunk. She remembers that day. She still has the picture. We found it. I was drunk on the couch with a pizza box on my stomach. That's how I'm telling you, you know, and I was there beloved, but I confronted my sin. You need to confront yourself as well. The second one is two days after I prayed and it was the Monday after the first church service I would ever do. Can I tell you, I would have never done this in a million years. Let me tell you about this story. Remember on that Monday, Sunday was gone. All the glitter and all the glamour and all the power of God on Sunday diminished for that moment. How many know that after Sunday, Monday comes and we got to face reality. We got to put our faith to practice. And I remember Monday going out jobless, but I had a guitar. I had drums in my room. I was ready to rock and roll, but something in my heart called the Holy Ghost filled my heart and said, it's now time to confront your past. <laughs> God, oh, these people, you know, I had friends. I had things that I, I was building forward to. It was really nothing, but in my heart, in my mind, I thought, and I started thinking of my friends that I needed to confront of this new life in Jesus. And I remember I said band meeting. <laughs> we went to a place called Frisco's. It was just a local spot that was there. And we all gathered there. She wasn't there. We met up. I remember just walking to the door. My friends were already there. I can still remember how empty it was. And it was, everything was just focused on the confrontation that was about to happen. They hadn't heard that Jesus had touched my life. And there I go walking towards them. I said, here it goes. We sat down. I still remember I ordered these tacos and, and uh, some French fries that were there. We were sitting there and I started telling them about Jesus. <laughs> I could have never done that, beloved, without the Holy Spirit. But how many know, like Galatians says, amen, who are, who are we pleasing men or God? I knew that moment that I was going to be judged after this confrontation. And I stood there. I don't know, beloved, I can't explain it, but the Holy Ghost was in my life. I could feel it even as a believer, because remember, I could never deal with conflict. I'd run from it. I would have found an excuse to say, hey, guys, a Sunday, I'm just, I'm busy. I can't go. And I was going to church. No, I said, today, the Holy Ghost says they need to know that I'm a Christian. 
This is why it's important for new believers, beloved, everywhere you go on that first day, you establish that you belong to the king. Amen. You stand there and say, hey, before we get any further, I'm just letting you know I'm carrying a badge here and it's got Jesus' name on it. Uh, and I remember sitting there before some of the friends that were there and beloved, the mockery came. Oh, you're just doing it because of your girlfriend. You're just doing this whole church thing because she got pregnant. It's a phase. It'll go away. Give it two months, three months. She will be out of the picture and this will come back. You'll come back to your senses. This is where my friend told me for the first time, you were always weak minded. But you know what? I thank God for my mind that was weak because I fell for the foolishness of the world. Can you say amen? And it was at that moment, beloved, that I said, you know what? Jesus Christ is Lord. I couldn't explain to them the Bible. I didn't even know what was in the word. But I stood before them and I told them this. I don't know what happened to me, but Jesus touched my life. Amen. It was a very big confrontation that I had. And it was an internal one. See, not all your confrontations are going to be to others, right? In a general public setting or, you know, people that don't agree with your faith. Sometimes your conflicts are right here. You are the biggest problem and stumbling block in the walk of God. And not many see it. They think that the problems are all around them, but God is saying you need to confront yourself. Let me tell you about the, fir- the third confrontation. I was hoping she was in the nursery. <laughs> Amen. But God put it in my heart. I put it on my notes. Amen. The biggest confrontation I had, the first biggest mistake. Let me tell you about that one as a Christian. She already knows. Amen. How many know that marriage is tough? It takes work. Whoever said men and women are compatible, they're crazy. We're two different creatures with two different natures. Amen. God makes marriages work. Can you say amen? With him in the center, marriage can work. That's how it happens. And, and I remember, you know, being frustrated of different upbringings. That's all I'm going to say before I get the, the sandal. <laughs> okay. And so we're learning how to work with each other. We're irritated by certain habits. It really is true. Amen. And as we're building up, I had a few choice words that I gave her. Amen. And it was not to her personally, but I criticized her mother. That's all I'm going to say. Emotions flared up and I was like, let's just keep it between us. And all of a sudden, it got to mother. And I'm just like, well, you know. And so we thought, I said, look, for the first time in my life, let me tell you what the Holy Ghost told me. He said, Vince, confrontation. You need to own up for it. Own up to it. Amen. Some of you need to own up to your problems. He says, you got to own up to your mistake. I'm like, can can we just, there's some things, beloved, you don't got to tell other people. You're going to destroy families. Amen. But I remember in my heart, I'm like, "Ah, I don't do this. This is not in my nature. And so I said, look, let's call your mother and I'm going to apologize to her in person. But beloved, this was not out of pride. For the first time in my life, I felt the Holy Spirit again saying, you know what? We're Christians now. We can forgive, right? I have strength now. I got the Holy Spirit. I'm going to own up to my state on my mistakes. We're going to get this right. Lo and behold, she came and it went the opposite direction. Choo, choo, choo. I mean, it blew up. And I'm like, God, you called me to confront this and to and own up to my problems. I was so mad at God. I walked out of the house. I took about a three mile walk. You remember that? Amen. I said, I ain't coming home. I started acting like a child again. I passed by a BP station. And I was like, I'm going to get me a beer. And the, for the first time in my life, I was like, after being saved, I'm like, no, 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 this isn't it. But I'm going to go on the three mile walk. And I went on. I felt the regret, but yet the empowerment of God's spirit. Thank God, because of that situation, God was able to heal that. Amen. But see, sometimes when we refuse to confront those things, beloved, we stay stagnant. You see, Confrontation is the bridge from stagnation to transformation. It's really what it is. And if we don't confront things, beloved, we're going to remain in a state where we're no longer growing for God. How many know what I'm talking about in this place? Uh, think about Moses in the Bible, right? Lacked confidence in confrontation. Moses did. The deliverer of Israel from the hands of Pharaoh. And if you remember the story, God had instructed him to stand before the world empire of the time to confront Pharaoh. And the Bible says this in Exodus 4.10. Moses said to the Lord, 
pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. And the Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Can you say amen? Who makes them deaf, deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. Verse 13, Moses said, pardon your servant, Lord, please send someone else. The verse 14 says, then the Lord's anger burned against Moses. Can you see what happens there? Even God was concerned about Moses saying, if you don't have, if you don't have the spirit of confrontation in a righteous sense, you're not going to get very far in your calling. Can you say amen? There, it, it, it will always be a hindering block from what you need to achieve because as Christians, we're going to have many Goliaths that are going to approach us. Amen. And we need to have the ability and the capacity to learn how to address those issues and even the great mountains that come before us. And therefore, in verse 14, the Bible says the Lord's anger burned against Moses. God was mad because he refused to believe God in a circumstance that God said himself, I will put the words in your mouth all you need to do is go. And sadly, people are miserable today because they miss an opportunity to address a situation. And like I said, confrontation is the bridge between stagnation and transformation. I want to tell you tonight before we leave, amen, that you are to no longer seek the approval of man. Man, stop caring what people think about you just stop now i know the struggle wells up every once in a while i still get nervous but my confidence comes from god my strength comes from god i'm telling you sometimes i preach and i walk out i said who was that because i don't remember a single thing because i depend on the holy spirit of god to fill me and to give me the confidence that i need Beloved, when I first stepped on the stage, and I'll show it eventually, Janie always remembers. I'll get the video, I gotta find it in the file of the first time again I'm preaching a sermon. I mean, that was a big day for me. From where I've been, what I have learned, and the internal struggle of my heart, I did not want to be on that stage. And to top it off, somebody was recording in the back. <laughs> You know, so I'm like, get out of here, go. I, I just wait in there, close the door. And then the people would come and hi, you know, <laughs> you know, the guys would come. We need more fire, more fire, throw fire around him. We need to light him up. Hi, everyone. Have a seat today. You're going to hell if you don't, <laughs> you know, my communication and how I was to articulate a message and to preach it with clarity wasn't there, but God was able to use me. Can you say amen? And beloved, and it happens when we learn to confront the issues of our life. Uh, how much longer are you going to remain uh, struggling with and caring about what other people think about you? Beloved, I would be terrified to know what God thinks of me because we are part of the kingdom of God. Amen. A lot of people get terrified. Well, God's going to judge me for the things that I did. Do you know that you will also be judged for the things that you didn't do for him? Amen. You will be judged for the things like uh, Moses here who nearly refused God saying, find someone else. Uh, maybe the other guy and the Bible says, verse 14, that the anger, the Lord's anger burned against Moses. I'm going to say it again, beloved. A lot of people think they're going to be judged for the things that they did. They will. But a lot of people forget you're going to be judged for the things that you didn't do for Christ. We need to confront that in Jesus name. I remember of a confrontation that I had with my brother, Andrew. Pray for that, my brother, amen. He's the second oldest. After service, you know, the Holy Ghost touches you more. The message had nothing to do with what I'm about to tell you. Close the service, she remembers. I'm like, hey, feeling something inside to go see my brother. God, that Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm like, oh, gosh, that feeling. He says, you, you have some things to deal with. I'm like, God, I can't. Andrew, come on. <laughs> you know, all the memories we had were just drunkenness. And, you know, I remember him stealing things. I mean, we had almost $3,000 cash that we had stolen from a YMCA. I mean, we were just crazy. 
Oh, yeah. We stole someone's down payment to a car. I don't know whose it was, but we took it. Remember, he'd go and, and, and he'd steal grills from people. How much I would lock up your grills. Amen. He'd, take, he'd bring nice grills and bring them up, and he'd, we'd trade them for a bag of cocaine. That's how it was. Man. And God had dealt with my heart. The Holy Spirit says, you need to go talk to your brother. Been saved for a number of months. And there goes that spirit speaking to me. You better learn to obey. I said, here we go. I drove up and I see I'm like praying. You know, right? Hopefully the car's not there. <laughs> and, you know, it'll just be a sign. And sure enough, the light's on. His car's there. My mom's not at the house. He was living with my mom at the time. And the Holy Ghost says, you need to speak to him and confront him about the issues of your past. <sighs> Walked in there. He comes out, kind of just peeks aside. I'm like, Andrew, hey. You know, our relationship wasn't good. We were kind of awkward when we talked, and it just came out. I said, hey, I'm, I'm sorry for everything I've done for you, to you. I'm sorry about the past. I'm sorry who I was as a brother. I should have been there for you. I was a terrible example to your life. You know, I started drinking, then he picked it up. You know, drugs, and it just got crazy. And I said, I should have been there for you in your high school years, your middle school years, your elementary years. And I was never there so consumed by myself of, of me of who I was more more concerned about my issues and my conflicts than being a big brother and you know I could I just remember him standing there he's the one that needs prayer and he's standing by the corner I can see it now and all of a sudden for the first time I would see my brother's composure break <laughs> we're both crying <laughs> the Holy Ghost was there amen and he looked at me, and I can tell that he received that. In other words, confrontation brought the healing process of a relationship. Amen. And there's a lot of times that in your conflict, you need to confront it. There's some people that you need to speak to to say, you know what, I'm sorry. Just let it go. Let God take care of the rest. Uh, and all of a sudden, these defense walls that were there against his older brother, beloved by the Spirit of God, like the walls of Jericho, they began to fall right before my very eyes. And I saw my brother for the first time saved. <laughs> I could communicate to him now and tell him how much I did love him and how much God had changed his brother's life and given him a new opportunity. And God showed up that day, amen. He broke down. We started hugging each other. The wife is in the back, amen. I mean, just tears everywhere. And we left out of there, and beloved, the burden that was taken off my back, beloved, is inexpressible. You ought to feel it sometime, amen, when you walk out of there and says, it's gone. My wife knows what it feels like, too, when you say, you know what, you deal with something, it's gone. It was no longer there. Confrontation, beloved, can bring an internal healing that you'll never believe. I walked out of that house glorifying God. No longer was it there, that pressure of you failed as a brother. It was all dealt with. Jesus was in the center and an opportunity for him to see his brother in a new light and I thank God for that. Amen. Galatians says again, for, for am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? See, I could have, I could have said, oh, he's probably going to cuss at me. I mean, he would he cuss one out, right? <laughs> Get the, out of here. You know what I mean? I, I could have been timid by that. I don't want to say co confrontate because I don't want him to look at me any different. Maybe he'll be okay if he just knows I'm a Christian, beloved. No, I said, am I seeking the approval of God? Or of my brother. I need to listen to the Holy Spirit. He says, or am I trying to please men? For if I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. And that is true for all of us. If you are still about pleasing other people, beloved, are you a servant of Christ? Because in my life, all I knew was this. I want to make everybody happy. Amen. How many know that in the kingdom of God, you're going to offend some people sometimes. Amen. Amen. In the kingdom of God, you are going to create enemies, not in the sense that you want to war with them. But people are going to turn on your back, beloved. They're going to start to say mean things about you. And then there's that issue again, beloved. We're not always going to please everyone. And we know that. But when God tells us to speak, we have to blow it out like a trumpet. My brother was crying. I was crying. God was glorified. 
The Bible says in Proverbs 28, 13, whoever conceals their sin does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Confront your weaknesses today. Don't delay. I don't know who it is here tonight, amen, but what God is telling you, he says, confront that issue and I will remove mountains. I will remove everything. I will create rivers in impossible places, in a wasteland, in deserts. I will make streams and opportunities to come out. Amen. And he's asking some of us tonight to, to just make sure to take that internal analysis and say, stop with the things that you're doing. Confront the sin. Don't go any further because of the things that may come from that subsequently. Let's read that quote one more time and then we're going to pray. He says, Cheryl Richardson, the motivational speaker, if you avoid conflict to keep the peace, you start a war inside yourself. Now, how many people want a war battling up in here? There's people exteriorly, you can see them and they're, they look fine, but they got a war in here. Everything's an issue. Everything is not fair. Because unresolved conflict that God is saying, you better deal with that now and you better address yourself because there is a war that is starting in your mind. I found peace because of Jesus. And we need to stop letting people convince you again of things that you know are wrong. Amen. Stand up to it sometime. You'll see how good it feels. No, I don't agree with that. <laughs> That's it. Because then they'll hoodwink you and say, oh, well, he agreed with it and now you're guilty as the one who does it. And God is saying, stand up for truth and for righteousness. At the end of the day, who are we trying to please? Because whether people, you know, that want to criticize you or offend you, we got to do what God is calling us to do. And that's why Acts 5.29, before we leave, it says, Then Peter and the apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Burdens could be lifted in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm here to testify of that truth. Amen. I got a long journey up ahead. Just like all of us, we're students of the word. We're learning in and out, beloved. But I'm telling you, one brick at a time, we start to remove the things that are not consistent with the word and begin to take a step into the unknown and address things. You're going to feel a weight lifted off your shoulder and God will be glorified, beloved. It is those things alone that God began to show me. When you're weak, I'm strong. When you obey, when you humble yourself, I will remove mountains. And God will help us with us. Amen. Let's bow our heads together in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we leave, we're going to pray. Beloved, we have a choice today. God leaves us a choice. We can lie to ourselves, right? We put on a facade and say that everything is okay. Or we could learn to trust God even in the deepest, darkest moments. Those are just like five things that I shared. And the many more that God used in my life to build me and to change me and not only that confidence to know that he is true, the true God. I don't know where I found the strength. I mean, obviously I know, but to me, I, I can't fathom. Just like, God, you have transformed me. I'm transformed. I'm a new creation in Christ. Li I mean, literally, physically, spiritually. I mean, God has changed my life and there's still more work to be done. The greatest growth that I saw was when I trusted and obeyed when he spoke. I said, God, I don't ever let me speak like Moses. Find yourself another servant. I can't do it. Because this is what grieving the Holy Spirit is all about. How many people do we know today, I mean, would have been mighty for the Lord had they been able to confront their issues? To be able to confront themselves 
and say it ends today. Sometimes we're the biggest problem, the biggest hindrance in our walk with God. And then check your heart, beloved, before we leave. Maybe on the live stream you struggle with conflict. I would encourage you in the name of Jesus, amen, that you take an internal analysis and ask God right now through his Holy Spirit. He'll reveal it to you right now. And he's going to show you some errors that need some fine-tuning, amen. And when you obey, you're going to start to see brand new doors open. Some of you that God is dealing with your personality, enough is enough. Why don't you be part of something greater than yourself, the kingdom of God? We thank God for that in Jesus' name. Anyone here, before we leave, you know that you're not right with God, amen. There's an internal battle within your heart and your mind, and you can finally admit it and say, you know what, it's me, I've struggled. I'm the biggest issue, amen. That is a step towards the newness of God. I want you to raise your hand. That is you today. Anyone at all, before we leave, say, that's me. I'm the biggest hindrance in my walk with God because of conflict undealt with. Maybe you're here, you're struggling, you're with timidity. You are shy, you are incapable, you feel weak at times. God wants to break that through, and I am a living example of that as well. You know that. that God can change your personality to what he saw before you were in your mother's womb. Say, this is the image of what I thought of you when I made you. But because you have no confidence and you lack the confrontation of your personal issues, you remain the same. Beloved, there's hope in Jesus Christ. Let me just say this. Maybe there's someone that God is dealing with your heart right now. You're, you're going to respond. But let me tell you something very quick. The devil kept me silent for 21 years. 21 years. An introvert who could not speak. And I wondered why, why was I so quiet? Why, why? I mean, you know, all the conflicts and the issues. Can I tell you what God told me? He said, the devil had you bound for 21 years because on the 22nd, I would release and open your mouth to reveal powerful things of the kingdom of God. You see, the devil saw me as a threat from an infant and kept me timid, kept me shy with no confidence because he knew that one day God would be given the opportunity to work in my life and enough was enough. It was broken at 22 years. I said, devil, you are a liar. You have stolen 21 years of my life, but I'm here today to say I've got 13 years back in the kingdom of God, understanding more than I have ever known my entire life. Some of you today, amen, if you want to let the devil keep you silent, that's up to you, but today could be the day of salvation, amen, the day of deliverance. If that is you, I want you to lift your hand all over this place. Say, I'm tired of the devil keeping me bound. Anyone at all, lift your hand in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Maybe on the live stream you raised your hand, amen. We'll pray in just a moment. Anyone at all before we leave. Thank you, Jesus, amen. We serve a wonderful God. He's about setting his people free to complete a powerful task, amen, created just for you help us with that in Jesus name. Amen. Anyone at all. God bless you. Amen. Let's stand church. When we come to the front, we're going to pray and ask God to help us. Maybe, maybe you're, you've acknowledged that and that's okay. Maybe you're acknowledging even now that, Hey, I've got an issue. Here's a perfect opportunity to make a memorial with God. Amen. Here at the altar, maybe you're on the live stream. You confess that you raised your hand, even if in your heart, I want you to pray this, say, Lord Jesus, I have been filled with pride and the inability to confront internal issues. I'm done with that. I want this burden taken from me. I can't take another day, another hour. I need your freedom. And it is only through Jesus Christ. And I believe that you will make me mighty and strong. Give me the words to speak. Help me to be confrontational in a righteous way, not out of pride, not out of ego, but addressing truth for truth. We're here today to give you glory and praise. I repent and I apply the blood of Jesus over my life. We all said amen. Let's just give God praise. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, your Son, your Holy Spirit, we thank you, Lord, amen. God bless, amen, in Jesus' name. Brother Landon, amen, I want you to come forward, brother, amen. We're just going to pray with him. We'll dismiss, and I do want to pray, okay? Bless you, my brother. 
Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Jim, if you could help me as well, we're just going to lay hands on Brother Landon. Amen. And Brother Landon, amen. Something unique. And I told you Sunday night, okay? I'm glad that you've kept the long haul, okay? I know things haven't been perfect. I know that there's been a struggle and a battle, but I know and believe in my heart that you love Jesus. Amen? Okay? Hold strong to it. And I know that God is going to help you in that. I just, I do want to pray over your physical body. Amen. Because we believe in a God of miracles. Do you believe that God can heal you? Okay. Every aspect of your life. Do you want to be free? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, amen, we lay hold of faith. And the foundation we stand upon is holy ground. We declare the power and the blood of Jesus here tonight in Jesus' name that you would touch every affliction of Landon. Father, heal him of his past, heal him of, of any hurt that has been in his heart and in his mind. Help him to look even further into the roots and the origins of every problem that he has ever conflicted in his life. For every struggle and every battle, God, every word that has hurt and every, every wound that has been uh, reopened in Jesus' name to be healed. And now we speak to his physical body because we serve a God who created every organ, who created every ligament and tendon, the skin on his body, the bones. God, all has been created by the God of heaven. And we speak this to this body right now in Jesus' name, that all would be aligned order to the order of God. We give this to the council of heaven and over the mighty angels through the spirit of the council right now in Jesus' name, that you would touch his infirmity. Let faith arise in his heart even now, God. Let it overflow in Jesus' name, God. Amen. Let him seek righteousness and truth and the power of God shall fall over his life. Heal him, God. We desire to see our brother healed in Jesus' name. And not for praise of men, but a praise of God right now in Jesus' name. Speak to his body. Speak to his body, Lord Father. Command it to be formed into the power of the living God as we speak unto it. And we cast out the spirit of infirmity. You have no right in this body. For this man has been made in the image of God. He is a child, a co-heir in the kingdom of God to be set free in Jesus' name. We give you all the praise, all the glory. In Jesus' name we said. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Landon. Amen. Keep your faith. Let's praise God one more time. We thank you, God of heaven. Lord, we give all to you. God, amen. We're going to bow our heads. Let's thank the Lord for all he's done uh, tonight. Amen. Don't forget, if you can, put it on your calendar. If everything goes accordingly, Saturday we'll gather again. And I want to stick to that territory that God said. I'm going to give you some territory. Amen. He told me clear, you ain't taking the city until you take territory. I said, okay. I confronted that issue already. I give it to God. Amen. But let's start like that very slowly and faithfully to the kingdom of God. Amen. We're going to bow our heads, close our eyes. And let's pray for our brother Landon as well. Uh, El as well. We're giving them to Jesus. Amen. I thank God for every opportunity. Every soul is precious in the eyes of God. We're going to bow our heads. Father, we thank you here tonight. God, enable your servants with the Holy Spirit to speak with boldness and clarity. For the Bible says that your servants are as bold as lions. Only the cowardly flee when no one pursues them. And we're here tonight to give you glory and praise. Help us, God. And I pray that even some of my testimony can help to uh, expand faith, to exhort your people into greater depths and heights of faith. Relieve burdens, God. Your people are tired. Amen. There's lots of baggage that we carry. And we want to release that into the kingdom of God. Amen. We pray for our brother Landon. We lift him up. God, we are believing for a miracle. God, I can see something happening. I, I proclaim that now in Jesus' name. Amen. I vocalize it in faith in Jesus' name. God, take care of us. Father, take care of our families, our children. And if it is your will, we shall return Sunday at 11, uh, 11 a.m. I'm sorry, in Jesus' name. And don't forget, I forgot to mention it before we leave. Uh, we are going to have a movie night uh, this Sunday. I know it went by fast. She's like, hey, it's already been the month. So we'll have, we'll have a movie night. We're going to look for a good one, and uh, I'll let you know Sunday. So it, it, here's, it's a very relaxed one, as you already know, but let's make an effort. Just one person. You know, Brother Landon, you two just say, hey, we got movie night. Just come over. We'll have refreshments, drinks, coffee, pastries, whatever it is that we have, and you'll be surprised. Hey, I'll go for a movie, you know, and then we'll, we'll give a message as well as that. Amen. So God bless you tonight. Amen. We'll see you, Lord willing. Uh, Sunday at 11 a.m. God bless you.